She was amazing. a good God. Because the Lord is good, say me. is good. And his mercy. Oh, yeah. Na, na, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, yeah. Na, ha, ha, ha. Come on, proclaim it. Give me two minutes, two minutes to, to wrap up this place. Yes, and yes. Thanks, give it your lip, on your lips, you want to give it to him tonight. Yeah, that was yeah. So I'm sooner. I need some worshipers in this room right now. Come on. Yeah.
Somebody will be asking, oh, why? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Another day of solution simply means another grace, another mercy, another love from God. Hallelujah. I will always say it and I always repeat it. We went to bed last night with certain people all over the world. They are no more here with us. We happen to find ourselves here, not because we're educated or handsome, beautiful, tall, short, fat or slim, but because of the mercy of God. Divine selection, as people say, and a gift of life. So this afternoon, I want you to say something to God on your own merit. You know how far he has brought you. You know how far he's brought your family. And if you can see well, you know how far he's about to take you. So I want us to be on our feet this afternoon to appreciate God. Just let him know how much you love him, how much you appreciate the gift of life. Journey messages, traveling messages that has brought us here this morning. Many have not enjoyed this today. But you find yourself here, whether you drove yourself, you came by taxi, Whatever methodology you are here in his presence. And I believe that as we let him know that we love him, as he has always loved us, there will be a miracle for you today. Already I know that there's a miracle here with your name on it. All you need to do is to stretch your faith to claim it. Amen. I want us to thank God this morning. Say something to God. Appreciate God. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Appreciate the Lord for what he's done, what he's about to do. Appreciate him for this service because he chose this day for us to be here to receive. I welcome you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I welcome those watching us online, those listening by audio or any other methodology, podcast, whatever medium you select today to watch and listen to this service there is a miracle for you with your name on it. Claim it by faith in the name of Jesus. If you are here or you are watching or you are listening and you've left your faith somewhere, please grab it and hold it because it will take you and your faith to obtain this miracle today. Thank him this morning. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We worship at your footstool this afternoon. We bow before you acknowledging that without you, we are nothing. Father, it is your Holy Spirit that is holding us together, holding the country together, holding the world together. If we are to listen to what is on the news media, we wouldn't even make it today. But you destined, you ordained that we will be here this afternoon to be in your presence, to receive, to receive and to receive and to receive abundantly because of your grace and mercies. We appreciate you this afternoon. We say, Lord Jesus, thank you for being who you are. Thank you for making us who you want us to be. Thank you that you are still with us and you are about to take us to where we need to be. And thank you that your hand upon us stopped the enemy from devouring us. This morning, this afternoon, rather, Lord, we leave this service in your hands. We entrust 
you that your presence here will see us through. We pray for the prophet of the house. We pray for his unique ministry. We pray that today you have prepared him to deliver as you want him to. And we pray in the name of Jesus that we, the recipients as well, <coughs> will cleanse our hearts to receive as we came to receive. That we pray that everyone that is here, Lord, will take home something useful, something great, something precious, that our love for you, O oh God, will never diminish. We surrender this service to you, the instrumentalists, the musicians, the congregants, all the ministers that will partake in the service. Everyone today in the name of Jesus it's a day of joy. It's a day of thanksgiving. It's a day of receiving in the name of Jesus. Father, we welcome you right now. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Take over as Lord. I decrease right now for you to increase and deliver what you want to your prophet. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout and take your seats. You see, whenever I talk about shout here, shout is a weapon. It is a weapon, and I'll keep stressing that to you. And I'll give you a very old testimony that I've shared here several times just to let you know how powerful shout is. There was a lady here, this goes about just before the COVID or after the COVID. She lives around Medina Estates, somewhere about there. And... <clears throat> She was being attacked in the process of being attacked by armed robbers, and she was alone in the house. So she said to herself, let me shout, because I hear Pastor James saying shout all the time. Today I'm going to exercise that shout. When she started shouting, the armed robbers took to flight. And later when people came around and they apprehended one of them in the corner, he testified there were too many people in the house for them. That is the power of shout. So when you come and you say shout, every shout you shout destroys something in your life. You are seated comfortably, but I want you to shout to the glory of God. Take whatever you came here for with a shout. You see, when we shout here and the camera pans on your face, your enemies that thought you would not be alive today, they see you on the screen, they hear you shouting, and they know that they've been defeated in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a mighty shout this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. I saw something this morning when the Lord woke me up. I want to share with you briefly. I saw the children of God, and some of them were hiding because of shame. So I was asking the Lord, why all this shame? It says, it ends today. <laughs> you, some of you didn't get what I said. <laughs> the Lord says, it ends today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Psalm 56, New Living Translation. No more shame, no more disgrace. This is the day the Lord has made. And we are about to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Psalm 56, New Living Translation. Three and four. Watch this. But when I'm afraid, I will put my trust in who? Oh. It, let me just check. Maybe it's not in English. But when I'm afraid, I will put my trust, you being who? Jehovah. Hallelujah. The verse 4 says what? I praise God for what he has promised. I trust in God, so why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? That is why I said God said that it ends today. Now you get it. Okay. Let's go to Psalm 70, verse 1 to 5. Psalm 70. I'll run you through some things, and we'll do a declaration. The rest is for God. Hallelujah. Psalm 71 to 5. For the choir director, some of David asking God to remember him. Please, God, rescue me. Come quickly, Lord, and help me. 
May those who try to kill me be humiliated and put to what? So God says there's no more shame today because our shame is going to be put on our enemies. Give the Lord a shout and receive it. He says, may those who take delight in my trouble be turned back in disgrace. And again, the Lord said, no more disgrace today, no more shame today, because he knows what he said. He will stand by his promise and will do it for us. Receive it with your shout this morning. And then he says, well, let them be horrified by their shame, for they said, aha, we've got him now. For, but may all who search for you be filled with joy and gladness in you. You came today searching for God. You will be filled with joy and gladness. May those who love your salvation repeatedly do what? Then you are sitting down. Don't be caught unawares by the word of God. Give me that portion again. Give me that portion again. It says, may all those who search for you be filled with joy and gladness. May those who love your salvation repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly shout to the glory of God today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to Daniel 9. Daniel 9, 18 and 19. Daniel. Sorry, we left something there. Verse 5 of the Psalm 70. Verse 5. Verse 5. But as for me, I'm poor and needy. Please hurry to my aid, O God. You are my helper and my savior. O Lord, do not delay. So, so now you see how the whole thing is fitting in. Because God says it ends today. So that means there's no more delay. At the end of this service, you go home with your package. With your name on it. Your family name on it. Whatever you've been seeking for, this is the day the Lord has made. Give the Lord a shout. Daniel 9. Daniel chapter 9. Verse 18 and 19. Daniel says, oh my God, lean down and listen to me. Open your eyes and see our despair. See how your city, the city that bears your name lies. We make this plea, not because we deserve help, but because of your mercy. 19. Oh Lord, hear. Oh Lord, forgive. Oh Lord, listen and act for your own sake. Do not do not, and will God delay? God does not delay because he said this. Oh my God, for your people and your city, bear your name. Hallelujah. 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 Now, what I want you to picture in your spirit, in your mind is any delay that has ever occurred in your life. Whether it's a broken, whatever promise, engagement, marriage, whatever it is. Maybe it's a delayed visa for you to travel. Maybe it's your fees. Uh, whatever delay that has occurred from 1st of January to today, 15th of February. Whatever delay that has occurred. Picture it in your spirit because God is saying it ends today. Amen. It ends today. So picture it in your spirit whilst we go to Revelation 10. 1 and 3, Revelation 10, 1 and 3, and then 5 and 6. It says, Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven, surrounded by a cloud, with a rainbow over his head. His face shone like the sun, and his feet were pillars of fire. Go on. And in his hand was a small screw that has been opened. He stood with his right foot on the sea and the left foot on the land. And he gave a great and you are sitting down. Now, if the angels are shouting, who are we not to shout? Give the Lord a shout today to receive. Let me have it. It says he gave a great shout like the roar of a lion. And when he shouted, the seven thunders answered. Every shout we give today means no more delay. 
every shout you give, no more delay. Every delay in your life ends today. So the angels are shouting in advance for our shout that there is no more delay. Continue. you see it in a minute. Continue. When the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write, but I heard the voice of heaven saying, keep secret what the seven thunders said and do not write. Go on. Then the angel I saw standing at the sea and on the land raised his right hand towards heaven. Go on. He swore an oath in the name of the one who lives forever and ever, who created the heavens and everything in them, the earth and everything in it, and the sea and everything in it, he said, some, some, some of you will get it tonight, instead of right now. The angel looked to heaven, he's already in heaven, but spoke to God about us and everything in it, and he declared, there will be no more delay. Give the Lord a shout and receive it. No more delay. I don't know where your faith is right now. Maybe you came with a doctor's report. Maybe something has gone wrong in your life. Maybe they said, come tomorrow. But we are in today. And God is saying today. By the time you leave, you switch back your phone, the message would have applied and appeared. Go back for your visa. Go back for your certificate. Go back for the loan. Go back for your work permit. Go back for your building permit. Go back for your car. Go back for what? Because no more delay. Give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Give me Jeremiah 18. Jeremiah 18, 1 to 6. When it's about to rise on your feet, you will know automatically. Jeremiah 18, 1 to 6. The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, Go down to the potter's shop and I will speak to you there. So I did as he told me and found a potter working at his wheel. But the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped. So he crushed it into a lump of clay again and started over. Then the Lord gave this message. Give me this message. Oh Israel, can I not do to you as this porter has done to this clay? As the clay is in a porter's hand, so are you in my hand. What has gone wrong in your life? What is the devil saying to you? God is saying that no more delay. He's about to remold you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. That cancer cells is being renewed. That marriage vow is being renewed. That broken house is being rebuilt. God is saying he's about to mold us today because there is no more delay. Give him a shout and receive it. Now give me 16, 16 21. Uh, Jeremiah 16 verse 21 the Lord says now now means what now 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 I will show them my power now I will show them my might at last they will know and understand that I am the Lord eh? did you get that did you get that? Psalm 100, Message Bible. Psalm 100, Message Bible. We are going to do a declaration. Do I need to say something? I don't need to say anything. It says on your feet now, applaud God. Give the Lord a shout this morning. Now take this after me. Repeat this after me. I thank you Lord that you are the one 
that supervised my rising this morning and you will be the same Lord who will supervise my breakthrough today any family altar blocking my progress to be destroyed by my shout today any clouds of demonic covering over my family my shout will expose it and the mighty fire of God will consume it by my shout today I receive restoration I receive divine breakthrough I receive something bigger than my losses today every delay in my life is being channeled into a blessing in my life so therefore I take this opportunity to shout as, as I've never done in Solution Center. Are you ready, Solution Center? You are shouting to receive. You are shouting to receive. You are shouting to receive. Give the Lord a shout. Those watching, those listening, shout to receive your breakthrough. Feel it in you. Feel it in you. Feel it. Always remember, always remember, don't, don't show this. Always remember in Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 20, 22, it says, as soon as they started shouting, the Lord, the Lord acted. So the Lord is about to act with this, your last shout. Shout for the village trying to collapse. Shout for the petty spirit to die. Shout to receive physically in your hand, spiritually in your hand, and everything. Give Somebody the Lord a shout. Lord a shout.
a warrior. There are battles. It only takes God to fight. Without him, that battle is lost. There are some God wants to fight along with us. There are some God wants to fight through us. Some, you don't do anything. There's nothing you can do. Some, God instructs you, do this. Some, you might not even hear God's instruction, but he gives you the strength to win. And in all this, God helps us. God wants us to never to give up. And no matter how difficult a situation is, how, no matter how great the warfare is, you don't have to quit. You need to stay in. Anytime I read a story of that judge, that is Luke chapter 18, I think chapter, is it 18? Verse 1 and 2. There are, he said, then he spoke a parable to them that men always have to do what? Men almost, men always ought to pray and not to lose faith. It's very easy to lose faith. One of the enemy of faith is delay. When you are believing God for something and the thing delays, sometimes it weakens your faith. Or and delay is part of life. Sometimes you hear God, maybe you are praying and God plays some big vision in your heart and you think the moment you go out, you see it. You hit and hit and hit. Delay. There's a gentleman called Delay. And that gentleman, Delay, nothing is happening. And you know, the life we are in, time is attached to it. And you look at the time, the time is running fast. And you look at, even this is happening, how am I going to? Everything is running, but the promise is standing at one place. All this is to frustrate you to lose faith. The most dangerous thing in life is to lose faith. The devil's attack in our life is our faith. If there's any battle that we fight, it is the battle of faith. And the Bible call it the good fight. Because when you fight, Faith fight is good. There are some fights that are not good. You just get your, 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 your jaw twisted by a slap and you don't get anything. But there are some fights. They are good. Something will come out of that fight. And that is what we call the fight of faith. This life if you don't know how to fight this battle, you will not get the answers you ought to get. 
But your start, look, anyone who made it fought this fight of faith. Our father Abraham fought it. Jacob fought it. He thought after receiving blessings from his father, the moment he said, I want to marry Rachel, his uncle, he will even talk, young, oh, that's a blessing, take Rachel. Look at how he suffered. Isaac faced the same thing. Jacob faced it. Joseph faced it. Who again? David, Joshua, Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego. Their faith was just sometimes you feel like you see the fire. You don't see God. Huh? They tell you about the lion that is hungry inside there. The den. You lift your eyes, you don't see the God around. So sometimes, at such time, God hides himself. He's standing by you, but you don't see him. The only thing you see is what the man tells you. The ways of man. Either your bow or your pain. Either you worship, you don't pray, or you fall into the lions are going to eat you. You begin to imagine. Satan begin to Im- make you imagine how hungry the lion is, waiting for you. But another faith, the faith will tell you, yes, I'm trusting in this God. This lion have eaten all the men they threw inside. But with this God, I know I will not be eating. This disease has killed everyone. But um, in my case, it will be a different story. I might not see God standing there. But I'm holding on to the word of God. And there's the story which I'm going to read from Luke chapter 18. A woman, a widow, it's about a widow, isn't it? Who had a kiss? And she knew her case was biblical for her. But every system seemed to twist the case. Now there was a widow in that world. There's a widow where? In that city. And she came to him saying, chapter 1, verse 1, verse 1, verse 1. Then he spoke a parable to them that men ought, men always ought to pray and not to lose heart. Men always do what? But not what? So it's very easy to lose heart. Losing heart is just giving, throwing in the towel that the faith does not work again. That there is no hope. If you are in that condition, the cure to it is that continue praying. When even answers are not coming, continue praying. This woman knew that, look, I have a right. It doesn't matter what it is. But there is only one, this one person who can help me. And he goes and the man doesn't want to mind him. Like some of you, you are angry with God. That sometimes you pray to God and God don't want to mind you. You know, sometimes you pray and God... Everything is, everybody, uh, God is silent. So now God remains silent. Oh. What bumper is that? You won't go to 
Sometimes I wish God could speak from heaven for my enemy to hear that he's for me. Yeah, I'm here. Don't die. But God never speaks. Sometimes the point people are just doing some things and you wish God will come out and show himself. But that God is quiet. They will lash at you. They will lash at your God. And this big God will sit down quiet. So he began to ask, ah, this, in, uh, this kind of thing, does it work? Is it true? If it's true, why is that he's quiet? So the verse 2 says that there was in a city who a judge who did not fear what God nor regard man the judge do not do what so there are so many things that happen if you want this I think I think one of the things way to success people do things one because they fear God Oh, some of you, if not because of the fear of God, the things you do. Mebuana. Ah. Some of us, or some of you, are not rich as people see you because of your fear of God. You had the opportunity to dupe the country, but you fear God. Some of you are not yet married. You don't have children because you fear God. If you didn't fear God, Ngawa will be a three. And I'm what? So something the fear of God put restriction. Or oh. so this is a man. What could make the man do what he should do is the fear of God, isn't it? But here is it, this man don't have that fear of God. Neither does he what? Regard a man. The second thing is that most of us do things, one, because of God. Two, because of men. Sometimes, even if you don't know God, you see how men, you have heart for men. And yet, Papa in Tia, me ferry Papa in him. Gaugua mean few. Because of this man, sometimes because of somebody, you just do something. You regard some people so much that even if you don't want to talk to somebody because that person has come in, you want you will do it, isn't it? But here is a judge who God cannot influence him, nor having have a friend who will influence him. And this is the judge we are going to. The third. Number three. One, I say God. You do things because of what? Sometimes because of God. You do things sometimes because of men. Isn't it? Then the third one. This judge didn't have these two qualities. He didn't want. Them. But there was a third quality he had, which all of us have it. He said, I don't fear man. I don't fear God. Let's look at it. He himself said it. Saying, there was a city, a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Okay, he himself said something. Let's look at it. Now there was a widow in a city. And she came to him saying, get justice 
for me for my adversary. Adversary. And he said, he will not for a while. He will not what? But afterward, he said within himself, though I do not fear God, that will even move me to do it. Huh? No regard any friend or any man who can put pressure on me to do it. Yet, the person don't fear God, doesn't fear man, any man, or don't regard any man. Yet, he has one thing which every man has. This widow troubled me because, because of his own self. The selfish man is inside. Because he wants rest, he wants his peace. Not because of God, not because of a friend, but because of himself. Or he wouldn't do it. Most of you, you will never do anything because of God. You will never do anything because of you love the church or the person. But when it comes to you, your own self, you will do it. Anambwa. Huh? And I. That is the human side. He said, yes, I don't have these three qualities, but I have one. Because I want my peace. And this woman will never give me my peace. If I don't do it, it's not that God will punish me. It's not that some, my friend will come and rebuke me. But me, myself, I don't have my own peace. So he did it because of himself. This is the way we deal with people. Either you do things because of people, you do things because of God, or you do things because of yourself. Oh, you, are you getting me? This woman prayed and prayed. And the man didn't want to answer. And Jesus said, I gave this story, this parable, so that men would do what? It is a story to energize you to do what? So it means that sometimes you'll feel like stopping to pray. You go to the judge and the judge is not killing your enemy quickly. You go to God and God is not as if he's not responding to your prayer. He said, keep on going. He said, listen to what the, what the unjust judge said. Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own? You belong to God. God also have an interest. He owes you. He own you. Do you think he will sit down and let you suffer and he won't mind you? He too has an interest. Even if I have nobody to fear, even if it's not because of your uncle, but because of my own interest, because of me, myself, I will quickly answer. I have a name to protect you. I don't want my children to sit down and say that I have God and people to point fingers at me that the God that they say they are seven. He to his God an interest. So even if he won't listen to anything because of Prophet Anno, or because of any other man of God, because of his name, God has his name to protect. So when you are praying, know that God will definitely answer and it won't put you off.
I hope you're, you're getting it. I hope you're getting it. All this woman going up and down, there was delays. If the answer was given immediately, we wouldn't have had the story. Oh, hallelujah! I just prayed and it happened. Did you hear about the Elijah's prayer? When he just said, the bad prophet did all their prayers to something not working. And he just came and prayed a simple prayer. And within a second, boom, the fire came. He consumed the, uh, the wood, the water, drank the water, even the stones, or it destroyed everything, fire. Then the fire of the Lord fell. One prayer. This prayer, he didn't pray. This is the type of prayer I thought this man should pray and scream and cry and louder and roll. Because this one is dangerous. Oh. Bringing rain. It doesn't rain. Uh, no, fire from heaven. Without matches, without petrol, without heat, and on top of poured water on the sacrifice. And we all know water and fire. Water don't help fire. To what? To burn. He poured fire and water on it. Gallons of water, gallons of water on the sacrifice. Then he just prayed a simple prayer, isn't it? What prayer did he pray? And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. Then that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac. And Israel or Jacob. Let it be known this day that you are God in Israel. Lord, for your name's sake, even if you mind anybody, let everybody know that you, God, you are the God of Israel. But your people are confused. They don't know who God is now there. Baal have come to tell them that they too they are God. And now they are confused. Lord, you need to do something. I asked the Baal to bring fire from heaven. They couldn't do it. Now I am here. I'm not going to pray much. So he said, let it be known for your selfishness, for, for your own self. Just do it. You are God in where? In Israel. And I am your servant. And that I have done all these things at your word. Elijah just didn't say, bring wood and listen. The prayer he prayed and whatever he did was done at the command of the word of God. He said, I have done these things at what? So he didn't just get up and say it will rain. Uh, let the fire come. God instructed him. He had instruction from God that go and meet the people. And this is what you must do. So when he, when he did exactly what God said he should do, any time you obey God's voice, expect an answer. You may not see it today. It will surely come to pass. Finally, oh, let's look at it. Hear me, O oh Lord. Hear me. That disciple may know that you are the God, the Lord God, and that you have turned their heart back to you again. 
it means that their heart have gone away. They can no longer trust that God. They now find it very difficult to believe that God. Because the God they related to was a God that they heard that there's some God. But they have, they don't know him as a personal God. Lord, I'm a personal savior. Then Yankopon Wafasi. Yankopon grandchildren. Our grandchildren were like this. So he said this. The moment he spoke, you know this why he didn't suffer. Look at it. Then the fire of the Lord fell and did what? Consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and it licked up the water that was in the trench. Wow. The moment this thing happened, do you know what happened? He didn't preach any message. First, he asked them that why are you in between? You are not sure where you are. Are you for Jehovah God? And they were quiet. Or are you for Baal? They were silent. But after he did this, they composed a song. And that song it was a spontaneous song. Now when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. So they know there is the Lord. <laughs> but I'm not sure whether he is God. And this composed is not one person the entire congregation without an usher, a, a, a worship leader saying that everybody bow down or lift your hands. They spontaneously put their forehead down and said it. Then look at what happened. Now when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. This one, the prayer is a very simple prayer, isn't it? But this same man also prayed. No, sometimes you pray some prayer. Some of them, you don't pray, but in your head, before you realize God has answered it. And the one you want him to answer, no, he delays. Have you, have you, have you, have you experienced that before? Huh? Sometimes, even the thing, before it comes to your head, you think about it, then the answer comes. Sometimes you just pray once, the thing happens. But there are some, you pray and pray and pray and say, ah, have I sinned? But if you sin, why is that that one? He answered it. So, this one, he prayed. Then after he finished, he told, and the said to him, seize the prophets of Baal and do what? Do not let one of them do what? Escape. So they seized them and Elijah brought them down to the brook of Kishon and executed them there. One man, when God shows his power, all the demonic forces with their priests will be subject to you. These are powerful men and women that were in the palace of the king. I'll call them presidential staffers. And they were <laughs> they were sucking the, the food that comes and they were taking the food there was hunger, but they were eating. Because when you are close to the city, you don't feel the heat. That's why the king of Israel, Samaria, when the ladies, the two women killed their sons, and they ate their son, 
the man didn't know that there was hunger in the city. So when the reporter said, what? So he didn't know. <laughs> he tore his he says, and started blaming Elijah. Look how, is that how it is? Yes. That's how dangerous it is. And the economic advisor when God spoke, he still doesn't believe Say, don't mind this man of God. When they sleep and they dream, they talk anyhow. Even if God opens the heavens, even if God opens the heaven and let it come, what this man of God is saying, it will come to pass. And the man of God said, well, I will see it, but you'll never end it. You'll never get there. You said, you never need And you can't imagine that what he said could happen. Within a few minutes, God orchestrated. When God speaks, his spirit, his angels, moves to work on it. And people don't know, how can this thing happen? Everybody is cowed and is inside the city. And even if the Holy Spirit tells you in the city that you should go out, the gate men won't let you go out. So God has to go outside the city. Why there's no gate? Why nobody is there to frighten them and before you come out, they, they, they've polluted your mind with fear. He went outside the gate and took lepers. That nobody can stop them. And the lepers were initiated by God himself. They couldn't have taken that decision. So he placed, that's how God said, he sometimes put some burden on your heart or in your mind and it flashes. That is God. They never knew God was speaking. But if God wants to fulfill his word, he knows how to speak to you and he knows how to make you do it. Yeah. It came in a simple way. They realized that ah, we are hungry. Pa. The people have been, those who are supposed to give us some small food to eat, they just don't get food to eat. So, so how are we going? Now, there were four lepros, men, and the entrance of the at the uh, uh, at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, "Why are we sitting here until we die? Were they not sitting there a long time? When God word came." God also started working with the lepers. They should have said a long time. But they sat down. The spirit came. The spirit of God came upon them and they said, ah, they begin to think. You think it's natural. Some of the things you are thinking, think they are natural. It's the Holy Spirit initiating it. Sometimes the way we want the spirit to move, that's our problem. That's the reason why we don't hear God. Oh, per se, you want to feel some other ice water running through your body and inside your listen. Then you hear a voice. Other small still voice. My son, my daughter, or oh, my son. My daughter, why are you sitting down here? Rise up and go. The enemies are there. They will run away. And when you go there, they will run away. They will take. That's how we would think God should work. But God worked. He went to them and put it in them. So God is putting some things in you. 
what is putting in you is he himself in us both to do and to perform his will. So it came like ordinary conversation. The thought that came is the thought from the Holy Spirit. He implanted his word in their mind. The same way Satan can also plant a thought in the mind of men and make them act in a certain way. God can work in that way. Satan can work in that way. I remember there was some time a brother said he got up and he said he, he, he felt he was to go and witness to a woman around midnight. He said, me, 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 been a year, me, say, me, come, say, shit! And then, yeah, me. Midnight. Single woman. Midnight. Won't you mean, try, we won't come to wait till the next morning. Say, oh, maybe, maybe she, maybe she's going to die. That's what God, I said, hey, If God, you be baptized. <laughs> Baptism. So sometimes it's not, sometimes it comes normally as a very strong, uh, something strong to go and do something. It could be God or Satan. It is the word that will help you. To know whether it is God or Satan. So this thing, strong impression came into one of them and it suggested and it made sense to all of them. When God speaks, he also convinces people. Whenever you're having opposition, it's not all the time that it is Satan. Sometimes it is God himself opposing you. He has the ability to convince everyone. So he spoke. They said, let's, why do we sit down here? Until that if we say we will enter the city. Now they have to take a decision. They don't want to sit down there and die. They must take a step. But the step is a confused way. There are so many ways you must pass. Either you go to the city or some other place. So the Holy Spirit can help us to make the right decision. Is it the city? And he said, and then he uses our mind so that people think that when the Holy Spirit comes, your, your senses are shut up. No. Brain, when he shut it up, he uses the brain to work. So when you're in the spirit and you're walking, don't you use your eyes. The same way your mind tells you that this is a step, so stand up. You do. The same way the Holy Spirit can also guide you in that way. So he continues. If we say we enter the city, the famine is in the city. So circumstances, God can also use circumstances to teach us, to direct us. Sometimes the voice, God can speak in a voice. Sometimes people can hear a voice, but anytime you hear it, plenty, plenty. Then something, <laughs> go and check yourself. You want to come, every, every minute you are hearing God dictating to you and directing you, moving you, then but he brought an idea. We need, to, we need to move, but we don't know where to move. Then the Holy Spirit then took the next step until you decide to move. You won't know where to go. 
if you are satisfied where you are, don't expect God to move you to your next level. Say they got unsatisfied. They were not satisfied where they were. Something happened. They think we don't have, we don't belong to people. We don't need to be here. We don't have to sit here. But where should we go? This is not where we should be. Then where next? Then many hinamengo. I don't want to remain single. But which woman, which man shall I marry? Okay. Then something begin to come into uh, 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 this, this brother, uh, this person, this uh, Sama spirit directly. If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city. The reason why we are running away, we don't want to stay here, is what? What, what was moving there from that place? Famine. And the father of famine is in the city. Because the city has been shut. Even we outside here, we are better than them. But nothing comes in, nothing goes out. As for us, we can go and do some small farming and really get something to eat. For them, they are locked. So we don't want to be prisoners with them. So the city, the farming is there. So what is the next step? If not the city, where can we get food again? The farming is in the city and we shall die there. Those people are eating their children. Then we. Yeah, yen sani hoy. Wonga wan sa kwa reyo. Na yanga yin min sa. And yeah, good meat. A dear bay kebab. So they saw that the city. Is no no where they are is no no then where else can we get food now therefore come let us surrender to the army of the Syrians at least there is food somewhere let us go to them there's food this is the only place we can find food let's go and surrender to them Hey, hmm. if they keep us alive, we shall eat. And if they kill us, we shall only. You see how they, they, they said that they put the death. We shall what? You see, who wanted the other? The thing, the death is waiting for. You. Whether you go or you don't go, you will die. So that death, they are not afraid of it again. We shall only die. Wobia iyo uvo mekanikimu. Hey, yet na ha ibu. Yakwanswa yebe tumi uvo. Anna, oh, Monsieur Mamma, you are not. Which one will you choose? Why there is a little hope, window of hope. So let's take the window of hope. And the window of hope was that we may either die, they may keep us alive, and when they keep us alive, they'll give us food to eat. But if they kill us, it's only death, because here crowd will die. When we go there, we will die. So it's the only, only that, that that is the only thing. So we we'll choose that one. So they belittle the deaf. They didn't put premium on the deaf. They put premium on their life that they will be the people can. I hope you're getting me. So that helped them to take a step of faith 
once we are going there, our mind is that we will be kept and we'll have food to eat. And they took steps. And the moment they took steps, God, you know, Elijah, Elijah, Elijah was the one who was taken up, isn't it? And what? Huh? And the chariot of fire came. Elisha had a double portion and also had chariot all around him. The moment he prophesied, the chariots were ready. The chariot were ready to implement the word of God. But they needed man to take step of faith. The moment the word of God came, that by this time, this thing will happen and happen, the chariot were alert, but needed only a vessel. Anytime you speak the word of God, angelic beings are always alert just to implement what God word have said. Because what he said was not his word. He said, tomorrow by this time. You don't know what he said? And it cannot happen when these people are still there. Unless somebody conquer them. And how many days can you fight these people and drag them away for the next day? Can you use 24 hours? No, but God was going to do that. So he governed his and the chariot, they went there and they were all part of the horse. He said, and the people got up. They didn't know. And the moment they got up and they started moving, the chariot started going. You know, he prayed when his servant was afraid of the other chariot. He said, God, just open this young man's eyes. And immediately, his, when his eyes opened, he saw that those who are for him they are more than those who are against them. These lepers, their eyes might not be open, but they were acting by that, the movement of God. And the angels were to work. So Elijah said, he said, the chariot, you are going to do it. So the chariot took them. So in the end they took, they were going, the chariot were going, bra, 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 bra. And when they got close, the people heard the sound of those chariots. And what happened? They flee in haste. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrian to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses, the noise of great army. So they said, to one another. Look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittite and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. That is how God can use you. You may think you are alone. There are angels that are ahead of you. There are angels that will win the battle for you. You are not going alone. You are not sitting down alone. You are not alone there. You are not going there alone. There are unseen beings. And when they got there, the angels fought the battle. It took angels to frighten them away. Because it is not the dead carcasses that they needed. They need food. So they drove them. And when they were coming, they brought their gold. They brought their decent. They brought a lot of food. Because they were just coming to live there to make sure that they call them slow kill me. Uh, so they can die slow death. 
to come to Sanoma, a friend, no more, Macomac, Macomac, Macomac. So, I never no kill you, Seto. He make you die slow. He won't be there, but he will stop you and engage you. You are limited. You can't do anything. And that was what he was doing. They beseeched Israel. They came around it. They, they made sure that you can't come out. And if you can't come out and your food get finished, what happened? You eat your children. So, finally, oh my God. And when the lepers came to the basket of the camp, they went into one tent and ate and drank. Oh, is that what they did? They, when they went, what do, verse 7, let me see the verse 7. Mm. Therefore, they arose and fled at twilight. They left and left the camp intact. Their tent, their horses, and their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. Imagine a man, this is great terror. For you to run and leave your horse. Can you imagine? You are fighting such a way that you will run and leave your car. You run, you have a car that can take you fast. But <laughs> you run and leave your cars here and all of you start running to your homes. Some of them BMW, some of them uh, uh, Benz, some of them uh, Ford, some of them these nice cars. One jackal, or nine car. Which one is faster? But when Somebody should wake me. Hey, they should wake you. Me, when I'm doing some dream, I don't want to wake up. Sure. O come do pa na wanya. Then yes, sometimes be ubongi say o come do na we we waso na nyankupong na wasu daibi na bibi na na u defie kesi na ismo na muzi ye mi ame brain ame nyafi zano ubeh na wadi otioni oh chale. Have you had some dream? Nice dream before. There are some you don't want to wake up. There are some you want somebody to wake you up. Those ones that are sweet, you don't make Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You don't, you don't, make, you don't make those that are.
Yao, I don't hear about Nadia Miss May. Metal, we met him. Then you go and buy it before you let you bought the house, you bought it in a dream. Yeah, you got this one. A dreamland, yeah, dead. She. You know, some dreams are sweet. Your house on dreams. Some of you, you can dream that you can fly. <laughs> oh, you don't want to say it because you think I'll say who you're paying for. <laughs> then, when you wake up, the dream, you wake up, you see the thing is not real. Say, ah. Just under your dream, and somebody come and wake you and say, some people they will come and wake you up. They won't let you finish the dream, girl. And you're angry that they woke you up because you are enjoying. The one you are suffering, they won't come. So it was like dream to them. They couldn't believe that could this be us? Can God use family lepers for to fight an army? Yes. God takes what is weak to confound the strong. The things that are foolish in the sight of men, God used them to make the wise men stupid. He took these weak people, neglected people, these people who were not counted among when they even deem population census, they leave them. They are called outcasts. That's why they are not inside. They are cast out. And to produce an outcast to bring divine victory. No matter what position you are in, God can still bring divine victory for you. Eventually, they started enjoying the food. They saw that it was real. It wasn't a dream. The people, they thought they would even arrest them and give them only food to eat. Now, they have driven them away and all their food is theirs. So, the human nature came in they first have to certify themselves. And Ah, we can just be our best friend of France. Our best friend, we feel we bring you. They are canona our friend. Oh, be there. And when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into the tent and ate and drank and carried from it. Silver and gold and clothing. Hey, lepers. And went and hid them. Why did they hide them? Ah. They went and hid them. Hmm. Asemo. They opened an account outside the country, <laughs> offshore. <laughs> offshore account. And the dollar is not quite sure. Hey, lepers. Who for me? Oh, who for me? Who are you? Me come as him. Me dem come as him. So they went, they took the money and they put millions of dollars offshore. So we there, we are secure. Hey, as much as we can take, let's take. Then one of them said, ah, look at our roots. Look at how the poor are suffering. People are sleeping outside. There are many hungry 
and dying. They were thinking about themselves. But now, an attention has been drawn that you, can, you do, don't only think about yourself, you have to think about others. So, one of them, the Holy Spirit said to me, hey, you didn't fight. So, you use one of them. We are not doing good. When you do that, you are not doing what? Telling some, tell somebody that. that. That when you take everything and hide, you are not doing good. <laughs> oh, I suffer. We are not doing right. This is a day of good news. Wherever God bless you, he placed you this a day of good news. It's not there to go and hide some things that will jeopardize the life of other people. Any position God place you is a day of good news. But not for yourself, but so that others can benefit. And we remain and we remain this is a good of good news and we remain silent if we wait until morning light some punishment will come upon us punishment will come what is that cause see us ah obi ahu kura punishment shall come if we wait until morning light some punishment will come upon us because god have prophesied God have said this afternoon, this thing should be so by this. If we wait, we are fighting against the word of God. God that message must go for what God has said to come true. But if we, that God used in making that way, think that we brought victory to ourselves, punishment will come upon us. Now, therefore, come, let us go and tell the king's household. So they went and called to the gatekeepers of the city and told them, saying, We went to the Syrian camp, and surprisingly, no one was there, not a human sound, only horses and donkeys tied, and the tent intact. And the gatekeepers called out, and they told it to the king's household inside because those lepers cannot even go inside. Finally, so the king arose in the night. He arose where? Hmm, I said more. And said to his servant, let me now tell you what the Syrians have done to us. The man, this carnal king, Fear can make you imagine anything. They know that we are hungry. Therefore, they have gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, when they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive and get into the city. This is the interpretation the king put to it. Sometimes God wants to help people, but they put wrong interpretation. And one of his servants answered and said, Thank God. Please, let several men take five of the remaining horses which are left in the city. Look, there were how many horses left? All there. They're eating all there. If eating everything, while we the car, you know, can't walk there. I am crying. A dibiya kebab, a binum dia ye collateral. A mining, you know, dibiya moga ka five pe. Is there na miko men boba biadi? Ma 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 kamba bola, na miko men kanje. 
don't put things in my mouth. The Bible is the one I'm, I'm talking about. Israel. The only property left was five horses. For a whole nation, how are they going to fight as an army with five military cars? Nature said, their case is finished. If God do not come in, they will be perpetually dead in that place. So, he said, the five that are left, let's risk and let them take them. And one of his servants answered and said, please, let several of the five, several, several men take five of remaining horses which are left in the city. Look, they may either become like all the multitude of Israel that are left in it. Or indeed, I say, they may become like all the multitude of Israel left from those who are consumed. So let us send them and see. How do you say in Ghana? So I'm a trial. I'm a queer. Therefore, they took two chariots with horses and the king sent them in the direction of a Syrian army saying, go and see. And they went after them to the Jordan and indeed all the road was full of garment and weapons which the Syrians had thrown away in their haste. So they just returned and told the king, that this can be strategy. You can't strategize that you want to kill somebody and leave your weapon. So, now the king had appointed what? The officer on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate. There are some people the king have trust in them. He said, you be in charge. It was the man who made to know. He's the man when the prophecy came who told the king, look, I've done economics, I've done this, I've done that. In economics, demand and supply I've done high economics and it's bringing a whole GDP and everything. Inflation. What book was in a micro microeconomy and this and the man was able to explain to the king that it can't happen. That the pastor is a liar. That this is impossible. Under the laws of economy, it can work. Five horses, how can you? And he didn't even say 10 years or five years or two years. He said tomorrow. Ah! What kind of economic law? So he ruled and explained the policies. the king that look this thing doesn't work and the king believed it so when it happened the king said you could you not say say no crap but why not as a name them in the war go and stand there and make sure Then, my name is your food and agriculture. My name is whatever it is. Now, the king had appointed that officer. Okay, but the people did what? 
nkofa kom de ono yemfa ne wey getima no nya kwanso when people are hungry they don't care about your position hungry people don't care ubokoto you can have degrees upon degrees and faun o ma dia no mohwe so when they open the gate people who were locked hungry people eating their children if they are able to eat their children is it you they can trample on now the king had appointed the officer okay but the people trampled him in the gate and he died obey say carpet mo hu katun ida katun suno ah had tom and jerry otimusa no sorry then so pass on tom and jerry to pass on them now i flat eh flat be this one is not tom and jerry case when you are flatting you are flatting you don't get up again he got up he did he couldn't get this trample on him he saw the prophecy prophets it was prophesied what he couldn't believed he saw it but because he didn't believe he didn't eat I hope today you are going to believe it. Today most of us have been besieged by enemies all around. We've started eating our children. Eating our capitals. eating whatever belongs to us the word of the lord has come that i will change your condition yeah. the food let's finish whether the word came to pass that's the most important thing to me so it happened just as the man of god has spoken to the king saying two seers of bali for a shekel and the seer of fine flour for a shekel shall be sold tomorrow about this time in the gate of samaria give me a new version new 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 version oh put it there english new look at her the man of god had said to the king by this time tomorrow in the market of samaria six quarts of choice flour will cost one piece of silver and 12 quarts of barley grain will cost one piece of silver say so is it possible what could school that you because it's not possible this must happen miraculously this things are only possible when the divine there's a divine intervention there are some situations in our life naturally they are not possible but by divine intervention it can change over by night god may do it because of his name sometimes god has his name to protect sometimes we care about god being disgraced more than he god 
God, if only your faith. Jesus said, he said this so that he said the person man will continue to pray but not to give up. This type of prayer I spoke about, there was one Elijah previous prayer he came. There was another one he has to pray seven times. Seven times he prayed. Nothing happened. Will you be able to pray and hold on to that? It's a fight, the good fight of faith. Our fight and our battle is not with anybody but our faith. Once somebody's faith is holding on in his faith, I know definitely the result will come. It doesn't matter how long it keeps. God will surely do it. He will surely perform it. He will surely bring it to pass. Has God said it? And will he not do it? Let every man be a liar. And God alone. Don't give up. Hold on to it. When the enemy, what the enemy is looking at is to destroy your faith. No wonder Jesus prayed for Peter. He said, Peter, Peter, what I see that's coming to you. Uh, Satan looking for you. He's seeking for you. To what? Not to sift to you, but to sift and said, someone, someone, indeed, Satan has asked for you. Satan to a vampire. He has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Upon some year bad, he want to sip your business as wheat. He want to sip your marriage as wheat. He want to sip your health as wheat. That anything at all can kill you. Takes away your immune systems. Destroy everything that a little gems can hit you and kill you. Your faith. He wants to sift you. What is he going to sift? Let's look at it. But I have what? But I have what? I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. As long as your faith stands, Satan cannot withstand you. He's roaring like a lion, seeking whom he may devour, seeking whom he may sip their faith, their life. The people he could devour is he come first and make you lose faith. That is why he was so just to you. Oh, your prayer, it won't work. All that he's doing that, he know he can't stop you from getting the answer, but he can stop you from stopping taking the answer. He can't stop God from giving you the answer, but he can stop you from receiving the answer. So he attacked our faith. When you are sick, it's not death that he wants to bring to you. Once he gets your faith, death can kill you. The moment you lose faith, you are close to the grave. So he will bring different scenarios. As your man son, got this disease. Your father, your auntie, your aunt, this and that. And he will give you family history. He will never give you the history of the family that never died by it. Oh? 
as if all your family they are all dead but some are alive oh so he will point you to those who have failed I said, have you seen your uncle has failed? Have you seen your grandfather was a drunkard? Have you and he will tell him, he will just select all the drunkards in your family. And when he is able to select 10, they are like, he said, hey, my family, 10 of them. Meanwhile, you have more than 200 family members. And ten happen, go through that. He won't point you to those who have succeeded. He will point you to people who have failed. Businesses that have collapsed. That's the one he will point to. The purpose is to weaken your faith. And when you weaken your faith, then he can eat you. Satan can eat a strong believer. He only eat weakened ones. So he weakens your faith. And when he finishes weakening you, then he pounces on you and destroys you. So strengthen your faith. No matter what you're going through, you will overcome. Today, you will overcome. You will overcome. And you are going to receive an overcoming spirit today to walk to said, How oh, greater is he that is in you than the one that is in the world. The power of the Holy Spirit is to help you to overcome. Elijah, he prayed and prayed. You know that he's the one the New Testament said in, uh, 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 in James that Elijah was a man like you. If he's a woman, a woman like you. Elijah was a man like you. A woman like you. He has the same passion. Can you imagine a man who caught fire from heaven and killed all the bad prophet and Jezebel? When the husband got and reported the case, the husband reported to when did he do he did the two. Uh, to he did how he brought the fire and did how he killed it. And he told the husband, Hey, Ojam, Ohene, which for? I'm your Kungumi's uncle for it. No. Jezebel himself herself was afraid of Elijah. But Elijah didn't know the woman was afraid. If the woman wasn't afraid of Elijah, you know who he will send? Is a Christianist. Why do you send a messenger? If he has killed all your prophets and you are angry, you will send people who are going who should go and kill him. And do you know what I said? He said that they should go and tell a messenger. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Why do you have to send it? Who should you send? If you wanted to do it. Ah. The woman was afraid. Sometimes people who are afraid of you, they just speak words and they put fear in you. If this woman was in afraid, meant what he meant. He didn't need to send a messenger. He should have sent those who do, do this. It's a question you 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 know how to kill go straight to elijah elijah make sure he doesn't survive do to him as he did to my prophets 
that is the message you should send. Not to send, you yourself, you were scared. So you send a message. So sometimes the scary man will send a message to scare you. She sent a messenger instead of sending someone to go and kill him. And Elijah, the words entered into Elijah's ears. And Elijah imagined the wickedness of the woman. And he imagined his head. And saw some of the knives that Elijah started crying. Oh, my, my father. Elijah responded. He respond. Oh, Elijah. 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 Elijah, how did you respond? And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Bathsheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. Man of God running for his life. That is what the woman wanted to achieve. He knows he can't kill Elijah, but he can make him run away. There are some people there, the demon, he, he, you are a torment in their life, the demons. So why do they want you to run away? They want you to leave the marriage. So that they can take their brother and destroy. They can take their sister and destroy. They can take their daughter and destroy. They can take their uh, 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 whatever it is. To. So they will torture you until you leave the marriage. You know why? They know that two of you are, will make it in life. And you are making it in life. But they will come and destroy it. Don't leave it for them. If there is anyone who should run, it is they that should run away. I said, so fool. Then finally, Elijah went to go and pray. You know, when he prayed, what happened? The rain came today. I was talking about prayer. He prayed the first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time, the sixth time, the seventh time. I want God to strengthen us to keep on praying until we get a sign. The sign may be very little. It may be very small. It may be like a hand. Every little thing can become big. It simply means that no matter how God starts little with you, your end will become great. And another story, another this about him was that when he saw it, he knew that something great is coming. He told the king that I hear what? Elijah is the man who goes by hearing and hearing the word of God. I hear the sound of what? Abundant rain. Today I hear the sound of also abundant rain. I will end very soon by doing something I promise you. And I'm going to base this one on it. Then he prayed. The king took the lead, isn't it? Did he take the lead? And he ran and overtook him, isn't it? How many of you want an overtaking anointing? When it seems you are late in life, when it seems time has passed, there is a certain speed we need. And how did that speed come? That's the hand of of the Lord, the anointing of the Lord, the mighty hand of the Lord came upon him. 
today. I'm going to end it there. There are certain speed you cannot attain until God hand is upon you. It was impossible for man to run with a chariot and for man to overrun a chariot. It is impossible for me on my feet to run with a presidential convoy from here to Tamale, uh, uh, where? Let's say Tema. And I say, my president, Nana Kufuado, you are, take the lead, I'm coming. And he took the lead. And I have to also get there with my car. And before he got to Tema, Tema uh, ran about there, I was there. I was in the house uh, waiting for him. Nana Kufuado. Supernatural transport. The oil, the hand of God brings supernatural strength upon our life. Each and every one of us needs supernatural touch and strength. Anyone that needed it needed a supernatural hand upon him. No wonder Jacob received a supernatural blessing for his father. So wherever he went, he succeeded. Until his uncle said, Jacob, by experience, I have seen that God has blessed you. Because of you, I have been blessed. I'm a son and a child of blessing. If you employ me in any business, the business must succeed. So today, how many of you want God's mighty hand? We're going to call upon him that his hand that was upon the leopard even though they were unknown, eh? they didn't know they had that oil. In fact, when a leper get healed, that's what we call a leper's anointing. <laughs> so God himself did it. Or, there's a priest one, because if they were not healed, what they touch become unclean. But the people came and took the unclean things they touched to a city. And God himself cleansed it before they got there. Today we're going to receive this fresh oil. I've spoken about many things. There are forces that have kept us under We are under siege, eating our children, eating the what we don't have to eat. We are forced to do what we ought not to do. Today, we are taking fresh oil to break through. Are you ready? Are you ready? There's going to be supernatural hand over your life. So we will take a supernatural. How many of you want that? I promised you the other day. Isn't it? We must overtake. Say, I am overtaking. That I'm receiving overtaking anointing. Whatever time I have lost, I am going to recover it. Amen and amen. amen. I want us to pray. Just stand up, pray. Take 
You ask God's hand to rest upon you. You ask divine victory upon your life. You ask God to help you deal with your Jezebel. Jezebel have imported Baal prophets into your land. And the later you have the Baal's prophet, I take in it. I want to suck them and should be slain. God is going to prove yourself as God unto you by allowing fire to consume your offerings. Showing your enemies that he's still alive. Divine victory. Divine favor. God has never left us alone. I want you to pray. Release this oil. Release that oil. The tenacity of that woman. Persevering prayer of that woman. Persistent prayer of that woman was the key to her success. Because of God, because of other people, and because of us, God will surely do it. Pray. Overcome the enemy. That is called delay. The enemy of delay that have kept you and imprisoned you and kept you till you are eating your children. You seem not to have made progress in your life. Your healing has been delayed. The healing of your son has been delayed. The healing of your daughter has been delayed. The healing of your mother has been delayed. The healing of your father has been delayed. That friend, your business has been delayed. Because of that, you, are, you seem to be giving up. There is a miracle running. The delay can cause us to enter into unbelief. When Abraham's wife saw that she was delaying and everything was delaying and age was not on her side her faith weakened and when her faith weakened she has to suggest her maid she has a subject he made to take a place pray And cause the abominable thing that maids have to take the place of their master, their mistress. Seven have to ride on horses, and masters have to walk. Pray the time. To reverse the hand of the Lord must be upon you. The Lord will quicken your life. The Lord will favor you. 
the spirit of delay will be destroyed delay to your healing delay to your marriage to your childbirth to your business some of it delay to your ex your profession you've taken the exams and taken the exams delay to your promotion in life today it's called a day of good news say today is a day of good news today is a day of good news because the time that have been lost have been recovered the things that have been lost have been discovered your faith will stand against every obstacle in life your faith will stand against every obstacle every delay every enemy of delay they'll be faster running I said some trust in horses some trust in chariot but our trust is in the Lord our God some of the things if we don't trust God we will be able to achieve we're calling God that today how can a man run with another man sitting on horse and chariot not an ordinary man because the fastest chariot will be for the king not an ordinary chariot but presidential chariot and you a man without even a single horse without a single horse was to run over 20 miles with a man how can it be that you all but the man even took lead today ask for fresh oil upon your life overtaking anointing overtaking anointing overtaking anointing don't say I have been left behind today is your day supernaturally there shall be an overtaken overtaken anointing I want you to pray I want you to pray that overtaken anointing that overtaken anointing it was what brought David from the last to rule over his children his family he was the least expected to become a king but the overtaking anointing when it came upon him opportunities opened and he was made a king over his brethren overtaking anointing was the anointing that Jephthah took. Jephthah was neglected by the entire family. Was the least among them. Was not counted. Forgotten. Left behind. But eventually 
who ruled his brethren. They will run for you. They will seek for you. They will look for you. Because there is some anointing upon your head. The stone who the builders neglected shall become the cornerstone. We all thank you. Are we ready? I want you to come out. We're going to take. Overtaking seed. Get an envelope. Face for a second seed. It's great, it's mighty. Elijah wanted rain. And the rain must come. But what did he do? Rain is water. He first asks for water. And not later. But they poured the water. Why is it water? The water was very scarce at that time. And scarcity put price on anything that is very important to life. So water was very high rated above even gold because it is the sustenance of their life. And that was what they were waiting for. The miracle God works was a rain. The famine that went away, it was the rain that came. We didn't see grain falling from heaven. It was rain. And when the rain came, food came. I want us first to take our offering. And put the water on the altar. Think over it. Put it in it. And come and put it on the altar. Give us a song. Dear Lord Jesus. Trust in all. Trust in Him for full salvation. Yeah, and free. I am trusting, dear Lord Jesus. Trust in.
acceptable unto you and supernaturally supernaturally respond to our heart request then let your hand come upon us Lord consume every situation Lord, we pray that your children will fight and win. Lord, your children will pray and have answers. Let your hand, the hand of the Lord, come upon their lives to control, lead, guide, protect, and supply their need. Lord, give them speed in life where they have delayed where things have not started where time is not on their side Lord you live in time and time is under your control I pray today that let the oil of gladness the oil of double anointing upon their life the oil of speed be upon their life the oil of speed be upon their life the supernatural oil of speed in their life in their finances in their marriages in their home in their children in everything that they put their hands to do lord let this oil rest upon their life in the name of jesus amen and amen hallelujah we pray thy name we pray, we pray, Thy name, O Lord. We pray, Thy name, O Lord. Just praise Him. We pray, Thy name, O Lord. We pray, we pray. 
Today I know some of you are going to take a double, triple jump. And I don't know where to start. I think I will start from the front. First come, first set. So I'll start from the front. Now give me another song, a very uh, powerful, strong song. Lord and overcoming and strength from heaven, let this oil be your hand, your presence upon their lives that what their natural body cannot do, what their natural strength cannot do, what natural life cannot do, let this fresh oil, newness, freshness, Lord, they're going to overtake. They're going to overtake.
we're, we're going to take it finally. We're going to take it finally. God is indeed able. How many of you remember this lady? How many of you remember this lady? You don't remember her. Come around, man. Good. How many of you remember that? It's a lady goes to where locked at diapers at some place. Huh? I just, yeah, yeah, you remember. You, should have, you are the one with the listener on your head. Wow. Where is it? Where are they? You've been, they are now out. You've got everything. Oh. Nothing was left. It works for you. The prophecy works for you. The word was easy. Everything clear. There is with uh, my my, my Hajia. My, oh, yes, do you remember? Yeah. What can God go to? Today, no matter. might be late in life but it will fasten your speed I said you might be late in life but I see speed who is here that says that the Lord exists for I am the Lord your God. I will not leave you nor forsake you. There is nothing too difficult and too hard for me. 
For yea, I will bear you on my wings. And I will fly with you. I will fight for you. For I am the Lord thy God that will guide and preserve and protect you. I see a storm. But I will hide you under my wings. And the storm shall not be able to affect you and affect your family. For times are coming. They that believe in me shall see my strength and my power. Many whose faith are getting weak be strong. For the Lord your God shall surely shall surely shall surely shall surely shall surely visit you it shall then be called the day of your visitation and in those days you will turn and say is it a dream or it is true your dream shall become a reality then thou shall know that I am the Lord thy God. The barren shall begin to be fruitful. And the land that cried shall begin to sing the songs of joy. For the enemies I shall arise, says the Lord. I shall arise, says the Lord. For your enemy shall be my enemy. Your battle shall be my battle. Amen. For the warfare shall be mine. Amen. And he that shall stand against you, I shall stand against. Amen. For your fear shall fall upon them. Ay, kamori anakaya. Toba ralianisa. Sheri amarabasuma. For not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, I shall perform and do it. Only fear not and be strong. In time of difficult season, remember I have spoken. For my word shall sustain you. My word shall keep thee. My word shall strengthen you. And none shall be able to withstand you and win. For I, the Lord thy God, have vowed to myself that I will be your helper. Amen. I will be your helper. Amen. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. For I will bear you in my own hands. And I will carry you like a baby. Yea, the rivers cannot stop you. The mountains cannot stop you. The hills cannot stop you. The wind cannot stop you. And even fire cannot stop you. For I, the Lord thy God, will walk with you through all that. Only be strong. Only be strong. Who is here whose tears are flowing and say, oh, where shall come my help? Your help shall come from me, the Lord your God. I shall arise and bring help. For wisdom is mine and knowledge is mine. For when I revealed it shall surely come to pass. Sons and daughters, I will unveil your future. I will unveil your life. I will unveil your victories. And as thy eyes see it, so shall you possess it. He that is struggling, he that is fighting, he that thinks that he's been defeated, now receive strength. Arise. Do not lie on the floor like that. Arise for coming new strength. Drink this water which I give unto you. And your strength shall renew. And you shall destroy your enemy. They shall say, who is this? And you shall say, I am the one filled with the spirit of God. 
for fear not my hand shall be upon you what takes many years to do you will take days to perform for my favor and grace shall be upon you and my oil shall be upon you for ministry and for work for everything that I have called you to do I will strengthen you to perform it nothing can stop you nothing can leave you for I am the Lord thy God the creator of the heavens and the earth when I command everything bow nothing can withstand my word for I am the Lord thy God only fear not be strong and walk by trusting me as you trust me i will take you to the next level of your life you have said i have failed in life today listen you cannot walk with me and fail for i am not a failure and for that cause you can't be a failure unless you choose to be for ye, my ears are open unto you I will hear your cry. I will hear your prayers. And my hands are strong. And I will bring help to you. Only fear not. Yes, one of you. In three years time. I will elevate you. One of you. By next year. You will be elevated. And given. I will take you and lift you and bring you to a high position for thou shalt sit with kings and eat with kings and that shall be your portion yea a year by this time a year by this time i will fulfill my word that i will lift you and i will raise you and you shall sit with kings and take kamo kita krasiba Zele in the grassu, in Tabradush Kipra, Ema Kamu Kamuri Kataya. For say, who am I? For I have chosen you. For you will be like my Daniel. They can do, they cannot do without you. For I see a hand raised upon your life. A hand and a mighty hand, and nothing could withstand that hand. For ye in it is strength, in it is honor and favor. In that hand is victory. In that hand is interventions. For I have stretched forth that hand to bring help to you. Oh, my daughters and my sons. I am the God, a man of war. No one has ever fought me and have won. And yea, I will set myself up against thy enemies and I'll bring that place. And you that, that wanted a decision, you are torn in between what to do, says the Lord. I'll bring clarity to you and thou shalt know yeah the lame shall walk the blind shall see yeah brains nerves kabru yishikiyanda kamere katarikata hori ya mama shatari wa baratoba pradush kimaraita prasuya i send the oil of the lord resting upon some individual one two three four five take it take it take it thank you jesus grace grace unto you favor unto you Your time 
to be elevated is now. I'm to be promoted is now. Your promotion will be like Esther. Yea, Kamadu, Elaka, Rebeltakaya, your enemy that hates you, that torture you, that torment you, that seek to disgrace you in public, he will hold your horse and you will sit on the horse and you will go in town and he himself shall bow before you. Your time and your season is now. Anything you bow to will now bow to you. They will see you and they will bow. Because my favor is upon you. Says the Lord. Within a year, you will see it in your life. Then you will know that I, the Lord, I am God. You will know that I, the Lord, I am God. I also see people God is going to bless financially because of his kingdom. Out of nothing, he will make something out from you. The world will no longer control you. The wealth that is in the hands of the world, I will take it from there and I will place it in your hand. Something. The heavens are heavy. The heaven is pregnant and something must be born. There are great people here. Mighty men and women. Watching me and hearing me. And looking at me and sitting here and standing here. Greatness is being released. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to close soon. Give me 20 envelopes. Sit down. Once God is going to release, I pray that this support was done for us. 20. A double portion. And a double anointing. I saw as if some people have been taken out and they were controlling wealth. I don't know. Today's date is what? 15. Oh Lord. Do it for them. For that, I want a double portion. This year is 20, 23, 24. 2024. Can I see this? I want 20 people to come for it. Lord, you said.
just one to open you are more than the 20 why should I do that okay look, don't worry don't worry, don't worry. I'll give you a chance I'll give you everybody a chance Let me give everybody a chance because they stretch forth their faith. Yesterday, he's in the US. Yeah, I'm praying for I don't know him, but I have to pray. Say, How did I come? It's, I wanted to pray for you. Ah, sit down, free my some two passports. I saw some two passports. Where is it? It's here. They are here. I'm not saying they are at home. Huh? Two. I see two. Good. You are the one. I see that free my cool man. 
Call this one the passport, and I ask for two. What is the first one? He's in town. Oh, I see. Father, I pray for. You see, so why did I bring this my two passport? But I pray that God will guide you, anoint you. Seek him for an anointing. Really? Are you sure? Did you do what? Will you do what you ought to do to get the anointing? Sacrifice. And the Lord will also sacrifice for you. Thank you. Get up. Get up. Where's your brother? If I pray and you leave, your church number will go down. Will you go and another person will come. Go and win some two people replace you before you go. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Let it be done. Amen. So get about five people to replace you. 
If you get them, then tell me. We we'll release you. Huh? Okay. What do you want? Huh? Take it. I pray. Someone is healed over there. Thank you, Jesus. A miracle has happened. Someone is healed over here. Thank you, Jesus. As I pray for you, divine touch is coming upon you. Woman, go and fulfill your destiny. We're going to close. How many of you got blessed today? What anointing have you received? God. Not overtake your anointing. Nothing should overtake you. Neither sickness nor disease. No lack. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let it be according to your word. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As we close, I see five children before I sit down. There are people here who need it. Five of them should stand for. Lord, they shall not abort their children. The seed they take. Let those seed abide. Today, what I've seen, let it come to pass in their life. Lord, let it be a testimony. Breakthrough. Kamaho, Izila, Tibro, Tamata, Batushki, Putokotoko, Medeke, the Murugis, Takatum, Honiki, Tokotokutu, Miriki, Zapra, Kadusikia, Tabru, eat the Gyondaka, let it be done in the name of Jesus. We we'll call it done. Amen. Take your sons and daughters. Those who are standing, say, shout, Amen. Amen. So it's yours. So I'm expecting to see them by next year. Amen. Amen. Sister, for what about that man? I'm a more than a clear. My mind is very clear. Amen. So we'll close today. Thank you for your time. Thank you for. Is it? Should I take offering? Okay. It's you who's asking me to take. Huh? Dave, tell me, Namuji. If you have an offering you want to give, just lift it up. It's something. Stand it. If what you did here was your offering, don't mind yourself. You have already given. If you have in your heart, I'm yet to give an offering. Take it up. Your hands up. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you for this. You know your people. To some is a seed they sow. And to some of us. We are not placing the offering upon. Look, look down upon it and bless us in Jesus' name.
Amen. somebody's face and let's share the grace. And love her. You will now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.